I'm using the fifth Sunday to do something that I've been wanting to do for a few months and just have not been able to because God hadn't released me to do it. But He has today. And I want to share with you about Bethel on Mission and our trip to Brazil in 2021. Back in August of 2021, Bethel sent Justin, Amy, and myself to Brazil to be on mission for you. Now, some of you are thinking, well, what do you mean going on mission for you? Because when we were in Brazil, we were representing Bethel Baptist Church. We were representing what God is doing through, in and through Bethel Baptist Church. And so this morning, I just want to start with a sequence of events that happen when a church goes on mission. I want to thank Bethel Baptist Church for doing and sending and praying as we went to be your missionaries. But whenever you send a group out on mission for the church to represent the church, to represent the kingdom of God, there's a sequence of events that happen. And you can find this sequence of events in Acts chapter 13 and Acts chapter 14. If you have your copy of God's Word, you can follow along for a few minutes as I share with you these sequences, sequence of events. The first thing that happens when you send somebody on mission to represent your church is the commission. The commission. Notice, if you will, in Acts 13, beginning in verse 1, it says, Now in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius the Cyrene, Manin, who, who had been brought up with Herod the, Tet the Tetrarch, and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. So what's happening is we're seeing where Paul and Barnabas are sent on a mission trip. God has set them apart to do the work of a missionary. And that's what happened at Bethel Baptist Church. Not everybody sitting in this room is called to go on mission, to go to a foreign country, to go to a foreign field. And when I say foreign, it could be in our community, it can be outside the community in the United States, it could be across the water. But wherever God sends, not everybody is called to go. But here's the thing, those who are called to go are to be sent by the church. And that's what Bethel did. They sent Justin and myself, and Amy went along with us to do this work. So the commissioning happened, and Bethel sent us to Brazil. But then there's something that happens while you're there, and that's simply called the work. The work. Mission trips are not vacations. When you go on mission, when you go on, on a mission for the church, representing Jesus Christ in a foreign country or a foreign field, that is not time for family vacation. There's work that's involved. There's work that's supposed to happen. In Acts chapter 13 through Acts chapter 14, you can go back, and I'm not going to read the entire account there, but notice, if you will, in verses 4 and 5 of Acts chapter 13. So being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia. And from there they sailed to Cyprus. And when they arrived at, at, at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. They also had John as their assistant. And as you continue reading through this account in, in, in Saul and Barnabas' life, you see the work that unfolded. And there was work that was there to be done. They preached the Word. That was the main reason that they were sent out from this church at Antioch. To go and to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to those who may not have ever heard. And as you read this account, there were glorious times where people were surrendering their heart and their life to Jesus Christ. And they were getting saved. But there were also some hardships that came along their way. There was also persecution. In one account, as you read through this, this, this account of this missionary journey, you see where Saul was actually stoned. They took him outside of the city and stoned him. All right, that's not a pleasant time in his life. However, he was commissioned to do the work of God by the church at Antioch, and he went and did the work no matter what the cost. So there's a commission that happens, and there's a work that happens, and then we get to where we are today. There's a report that happens. When you get down to the end of chapter 14 and verse 27, it says, Now when they had come and gathered the church together, they reported that God, what God had done with them and that He had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. That's why I'm here this morning. I want to give you the report today. 
I want to give you a report on what happened when Bethel commissioned Justin and I to go. And the work was done. Here's what happened when we were in Brazil and we were there representing Bethel Baptist Church. Let's pray as we move forward. Father, thank you for this time together. I thank you for the opportunity we have to come into this place and to hear about the work that you're doing in and through Bethel Baptist Church. Father, I pray that you would continue to let us remain faithful, to remain being a church that are planting seeds across the globe through missions. Father, I pray that as this report's unfolded, that you would touch our hearts. And Father, you would open our eyes and let us see the need of the gospel to those who may have never heard the name Jesus. Father, thank you again for this time. Bless it only as you can. We ask in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. I want to start with this. Thank you. Thank you, Bethel, for sending us to do the work of the Lord on your behalf in Brazil. You sent the three of us down there to do a work, and that's the work that we did. We started before we ever left. We took with us equipment to provide the gospel to places that the gospel could never go. Now, some of you, as we were preparing to go, I shared with you, and I actually showed you some of the torches. Um, We had the opportunity to take these backpacks with us. We took four backpacks. We took over a hundred of the torches. And these are MP3 players that are solar powered where the gospel can be, be taken into the most remote places of the jungle and be heard in the language of the people who receive them. These backpacks have video players and they have the Jesus film in the language of those who are going to be watching this film. They have... Each backpack has a 10 foot by 10 foot screen. It's got a solar power projector. No power is needed. So the gospel can be taken into the most remote places of Brazil and people hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. We, we packed our suitcases and we took just as little as we could to get by for the time that we were there so that we could take this equipment with us. This equipment is supplied by Renew Outreach International. This is an outfit that's in Atlanta, Georgia, and they've got a bunch of guys sitting around playing with computer stuff and playing with these MP3 players and this solar powered equipment where the the gospel can be taken into the jungle. We, we got to we had the privilege of packing in some of this equipment and Bethel made that possible. We were, we, were the, we were the pack mules for Renew Outreach to carry the gospel into Brazil. But while we were there, it's all about Jesus. Everything is about Jesus. We had an opportunity to preach and to teach the word. And that's our priority, folks. I don't care what we do or where we go. Our priority is to keep Jesus in front of people who may have never heard the name Jesus. Amen? As we were preaching, we had opportunity, I had opportunity when I got there. I had no, you never know what's going to happen until you show up. But I woke up one morning and Mario said, you're preaching three times today. You're preaching one time in his other place. You know, so I had to be ready. And I had the opportunity to preach in Pimenta Bueno. This is a picture of the church that I got to preach in. I've, I've had the opportunity to preach in this church many times before. But there's a new pastor there. And I had no idea how God was going to use me. You can see Marilda standing by there. Marilda's not preaching. She's just interpreting for me. So I'm preaching in English. Marilda is translating into Portuguese. And this group of people are listening. And they're engaged. And I'm I'm watching and I'm looking to see how engaged this church would be. And I had the opportunity to preach about being on mission in your hometown. That was a concept that I preach here a lot. If we fail to do missions across the street and we go across the world, we've not done our job. And so I had the opportunity to share about being on mission where you are. And at the end of the service, I had no idea how God was going to use that. The pastor of this church came up to me with tears in his eyes. And folks, this broke my heart. He said, I've never heard that before. He's all about preaching to the congregation, but he had no concept of reaching the community that was around him. And folks, that, that just, it broke my heart, but at the same time, I'm thinking, all right, this pastor just got ignited to share the gospel with the community that's around him. I also had the opportunity to preach at the YWAM campus, and these are, YWAM simply means youth with a mission. 
And these are some, some youth, and, and we actually met some that were from Ohio, and I think some from Michigan, that are doing missions in Porto Velho, Brazil. But they were here on campus, and I had the opportunity to preach there. And one of the guys that is actually on staff there on the campus came up to me, and he said, you know, he said, God sent you here to preach to me this morning. And all I was doing, I was sharing the story of my dad and how he retired from preaching and then went into mission work. And this guy said, you know, he said, I've been battling with God about what he has for me. And he said, because he sent you here, now I know that I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. So the gospel is being carried out. I also had the opportunity to preach on the campus at Centro Cana. And I got to preach to these that are being trained to be the next missionaries and got to pour into them and have services with them. And folks, that's what it's about. It's about keeping the gospel in front of these that are about to go out. We also got to attend a classroom. And this is a second year class that was there at Camp Ocana. And they have a three-year course that, they, that all the students have to go through. And we got to sit there and listen to Lalini pour into these students. And we had no idea what he was saying. However, it was very interesting. And so as he was teaching this class, we got to participate in that teaching. We got to sit down with Cleo, who is the, the camp director at YWAM there in Porto Velu. And we got to hear her passion about what the, the youth on mission are doing there and how they're reaching that community and reaching the indigenous people around them. And got to really pour, got to really hear their heart about how God is using them. All this happened because Bethel commissioned us to go. And we got to see what God is doing. We got to interact with what God is doing in Brazil. But most of our time was spent at Centro Cana. This is where Mario and Tanya have been ministering since the late 1980s. And God has just continued to grow this ministry and to pour into this ministry and to use Pastor Mario and to use Tanya as they invite these indigenous uh, indigenous people to come out of the village and to get a get a get trained in how to share the gospel to their people and their tribes and their next the next tribes up river god has used this you can see this map of central cana when the first time we went there were only three buildings on this campus and now the campus is almost full there's nowhere else to build a building without taking some trees down because God has continued to bless when we the first the first trip i made to central cana there were five students now there's over 100 that are on campus all the time. Teachers and families and students that are learning how to be missionaries to their own people in Brazil. And so God has just used this to grow it and to, and to bless it. You can see in this next picture that you have the buildings, you have the training center, but then it's right on the edge of the jungle. Justin got mad because I wouldn't let him keep walking into the jungle, but I didn't know where I was going and I wanted to come home. But he was ready to keep going down to the river. But everything is surrounded by jungle. And so the God has given them this place. And they're becoming self-sufficient. You can see Mario standing by this garden where they're growing their own vegetables, growing their own food, so that they'll know that they have the means to, to meet the, the physical needs of those who are on campus. You can see that the, the, in his garden, it's got a raised bed garden. And I asked him, I said, Mario, I said, why do you take time to build it up and to raise it up? And he said, if we don't, the hogs will eat it before we can get to it. So they have the same problems we have. And so they've, they've got it fenced in, they've got it uh, blocked off, and they've got the raised beds, and they're becoming self-sufficient there on the campus. This is a picture that I just threw in, and this is a picture of a cashew tree. And it grows this beautiful fruit, but this is where you get the cashew nuts, and they're all over the campus. There's cashew trees, there's cacao trees, which is where the chocolate comes from, mango trees, you name it. God, it's like a little garden of Eden, and, and they're, they're living off the land that God has blessed them with. But that's not what the main focus of Centra Cana is. Centra Cana's main focus is this. This is a picture of the outside of a recording studio. This is a recording studio that funds from Bethel and other churches have helped to put together and to build. And those torches that we take in, the MP3 players, these students that come in, 
They, smi- they might speak Portuguese, but if they do, it's a broken Portuguese. But they speak a dialect in their own language. And so what they can do is they can come in and with the Scripture sit down and they, re- they can record Scripture. In this, in this soundproof. And you can see how they soundproof the roof up here. They just used foam and everything that they could get. And they soundproof this recording studio. It's fully functioning. It's got the, equi- the, the recording equipment and all in there. And they can take time, sit down, and record Scripture in the language and then take it in on MP3 players so that the people can hear the gospel in their own language. That's what Mario is training these students to do. They're reaching the indigenous. And this picture is a banner that, that talks about UNATIS, which is the mission group that they're united with. And this mission group, their main focus is reaching the indigenous people of Brazil. Right now, we know that there's over 200 uh, indigenous groups that have never heard the name Jesus in Brazil. And so we're training these, these young, young Indians to be missionaries to their people and the next people upriver so they can take the gospel into the tribes. This next picture, you see a picture of the daycare center. And some people are probably wondering, why is there a daycare center at a Bible institute? Because Mario has discovered that no longer does he take single students. He takes married students. Because as he was bringing in the single students, you know what that was causing. It was causing some, some late night staying up, making sure the boys and the girls stayed separated. So now he takes married students. Well, in order for the married students to come in and go to school, they have to have somewhere for their kids to go. And you can see these kids outside the daycare center. He has a full functioning daycare center. You can see the picture of the kids. Now, this next picture is, is my favorite. You see Justin standing there, and you see this little fella standing in the middle of the floor, and he's looking up at Justin. Now, I don't speak very good Portuguese, but I do know what this young man said. He said, that is a big dude. He was shocked to see somebody that big with all that hair on his face. I mean, that was just amazing to this little fellow. But they don't just keep the kids in the daycare center. Because as, every day the kids are there from like 8 o'clock in the morning till 12 o'clock. They eat lunch and then they go back with their families. But anytime you walk by that daycare center, you hear the teachers teaching them Bible verses, teaching them songs about Jesus. And you hear those little voices ringing out all over campus, singing songs about Jesus. Folks, that's what it's about. They're teaching the parents how to be missionaries, but they're teaching the young ones about Jesus while their parents are learning how to be missionaries. Little ones are important. If you'll notice this picture that's up on the screen, this was in one of our services there at the camp. I don't know if you can see the little fella very clearly with the blue ball cap on. But he's got his blue ball cap on and his red shorts and his little tennis shoes. But laying in that chair, he's got his Bible. This little fella has no idea what those words say. But it just struck my heart when I looked over there and saw this little guy flipping through the pages of the Bible. Folks, if we don't teach them when they're that age, when they get older, they're gone. We better put Jesus in front of them when they're young. And we need to take that lesson and bring it back here. So... That's what we did while we were there at Central Cana. We poured into the students. We got to talk to Mario, find out what some needs are there, find out what's going on and how he continues to further. And I'm going to get into that a little bit in just a moment. But we also got some time to spend in Porto Value. I don't know how many of you have seen the movie Jungle Cruise. Anybody seen the movie Jungle Cruise? Uh I see some little hands back there. Jungle Cruise, if you watch that movie, they are, that it is staged in Porto Velho. All right? They're staged in Porto Velho, Brazil. This is where we were. We got to spend a few days there. That's where we had to have our COVID test to get, come back home and all that kind of fun stuff. But Porto Velho is on this big river. And so we were staying at the YWAM campus there in Porto Velho. We were staying there um, with them, learning a little bit about what they did. And you can see in this next a picture. This is the entrance there, and it just says Jokum. And Jokum literally means YWAM in Portuguese. I'm going to try to read it the best I can. But it's Jovem com uma missão, meaning youth with a mission. Youth with a mission. And so what they're doing is they're taking these college students and bringing them in, they're putting them on mission, and they're reaching out to the communities around them. 
Now, what we didn't know was this, is how in-depth it gets. They have a full-functioning lab there on this campus. They have a pharmacist that walked away from a, a promising career and surrendered her heart to missions, and she's working, making medicine for these indigenous that live on the river. They're going out, and they're working with the homeless, and they're going out and reaching the community around them. They're, they're, they're giving them food to eat. They're giving medicine for the problems that are going on with them. And they have multiple needs there at this campus. And we met Cleo, and we got to spend time talking to her. And we, we, we saw her heart. And she's originally from Rio, and God placed her here to run this campus. And it's just beautiful listening to what they're doing there. If we'd have had another week, we'd have stayed right there and gone out into the community with them to reach them. But because of Bethel's generosity and because of the mission heart that this church has, I want to share with you some projects and some ministry opportunities that have been funded because of Bethel. Now, this is important because a lot of us can, can never go. A lot of us can never see with our own eyes what's happening there. But because of the generosity of this church and because of the heart to give to missions from this church, this, these things are made possible. And here's the great thing about it is it's credited to our account when it comes to kingdom work. We may never put our feet on foreign soil, but because of the prayers and because of the generosity, we see what happens. Because of Bethel's faithfulness, they got to finish the medical clinic. This is a fully functioning medical clinic. They have dentist chairs. They have doctors that come in and that, that offer services. And so because of Bethel's faithfulness, they got to finish this clinic. They got to make it look nice on the outside. They got to finish some of the needs on the inside. But also because of Bethel's faithfulness, this building that you see on this next picture was built from the floor up. It was completely finished and furnished by Bethel Gifts. And what this building is, it is a, it's a biblical technical building. Meaning when you go inside this room, and Mario's sending me pictures, I wish I would have had them for this. But when you go into the room surrounding each room, nothing but computers, it's a computer lab for lack of a better word where the students can go in there and sit down and they can do their work and they can help transcribe into, the, into their original language the Word of God. So this is a, com a complete technical building that was built from the, from the ground up and furnished because of the gifts from Bethel Baptist Church. And folks, let me tell you something. That is something that we need to say, hallelujah and glory to God, that we have a part in the ministry Going, sending the gospel out to people who may never have the opportunity to hear it. Not only did we build this building, but in the background, you can see a residence building that last year, over the last couple of years, some of the funds that Bethel sent to Brazil helped build another building so that they could, ha they could hire more teachers to come in and to teach these students. Not only that, but this building that you see next is the cafeteria that was in a lot of disarray. And because of Bethel's faithfulness and Bethel's generosity, they got to do some upgrades on the cafeteria. They got to build a pantry. And I asked Mario, I said, why, why, why is there a need for a pantry? He said, because if we don't have something we can seal off, the rats and the, and the varmints will eat the food before we ever have a chance to. So because of Bethel's faithfulness, now they have a safe place to store and to keep the food that the that the campus needs to, to supply all of the students and, and, the, and the staff that's there. Not only that, but you see Mario standing by water tanks. Back, it's back when COVID started hitting on, on all cylinders in 2020, Mario reached out to me and he said, he said, we, we got a big problem. Our well went dry. We have no way to get water. And I asked him, I said, how can we make this happen? And because of Bethel's faithfulness and Bethel's generosity, we were able to buy these water tanks that now the city has piped in water and they can fill these tanks up so when the wells run dry, they don't. They'll have water to continue to sustain the campus. Not only that, but you see this fence that goes around the property, and this is a much needed thing around that area. Because if they don't have this fence, people will break in and they'll steal everything that they have. So because of Bethel's faithfulness and Bethel's generosity, they were able to complete this safety fence around the property. 
That's how God is using us in Brazil. That's how God is using Bethel Baptist Church on the foreign mission field. Those are just some things that were built, some buildings that were repaired, some buildings that were finished. But here's some ministry that happened. This next picture you'll see is Marilda and Anesimo. Marilda was our interpreter. Marilda was raised by, by uh, American missionaries in Brazil. Marilda is a Tarana Indian. And her mother couldn't take care of her. She was very sick when she was a baby. And her mother brought her to the missionaries that were there in their community and just said, here, you take her. She's going to die, but I want you to have her until she dies. Well, they nursed her back to health. And Marilda met, uh, met Anesimo, who is Brazilian, uh, Brazilian native. They got married, and God has used them in a mighty way. They live in Campo Grande, which is in southern Brazil. We were in northern Brazil. They, they took time out of their ministry and came and spent the entire time with us so she could interpret for us. But what I didn't know was Marilda had been suffering with a gallbladder issue. And she had been needing surgery for months and months and months, but just couldn't afford to do it. Because of Bethel's faithfulness and because of Bethel's generosity, Marilda had her gallbladder surgery. We helped get that gallbladder surgery, and now she is feeling 100% better, and they're able to do ministry a whole lot more effectively. Folks, that's what it's about. That's what missions is all about. Not only that, but this is probably my favorite picture of all. I'm going to, I'm going to say his name in Portuguese, which is Isaac, which for us is Isaac. Isaac's dad is one of the lead professors at the Bible Institute. Lalini is just a fine man. I've known him for years and years. His daughter got married. When I first started going to Brazil, his daughter wasn't much bigger than Isaac. Got married. Isaac was born. And Isaac had a problem with his eyes. One of his eyes turns in. You can't see it very clearly in this picture. But his eye turned completely in so you could barely see the pupil of his eye. The doctors told them that if he, had this, if he had this certain surgery done before he was two years old, they could correct the problem and it would be okay. But after he turned to, there would be nothing they could do. God sent us to Brazil at a certain time with the ability, because of Bethel's faithfulness and Bethel's generosity, we were able to leave them with enough money to get Isaac's eyes fixed. Isaac is feeling great. His eyes are corrected and he'll never have any more trouble with his eyes. That was hindering missionaries from doing the job that God had called them to do because they were trying to raise funds to get Isaac's eyes fixed. Because of Bethel's generosity, Isaac now has perfect vision. Because of our support to Central Cana, because the training that's happening there we're seeing the next generation of missionaries that are being raised up to reach the indigenous people of Brazil. And I want to show you just a few pictures of some that we met. This is a Tarana family that's going to Acre. They're going to Acre as missionaries back to their people in the next villages upriver. The next faces you see, this is a family that's already living in Amazonia. And they're working to reach the people there in their villages and the villages surrounding them. These missionaries are there and they're serving. And they're serving at their own expense. And they need help. They need help to live and to, and to uh, continue to be able to serve where God sent them. This is Mario and Tanya with our group. And because of Bethel's faithfulness and generosity... We send money to Mario and Tanya every month. The people at Central Cana will never have to go hungry because Bethel Baptist Church is covering the, all the money for the food that that campus needs month in and month out. Because of your generosity, we can allow Mario to be freed up to do what God has called him to do and not be concerned about where the next meal is coming from. This next little fellow that's standing with Justin and, and I is a Kashinawa. And he's there with his family. And uh, I think Justin could have probably brought him home too because he was big buddies with Justin. He wanted to be around him all the time. But this Kashinawa family are going back to their village 
to share the gospel and to become a pastor in that community. This is Mario and Anesimo standing with us. And Anesimo is one of my dearest friends in the world. He's probably closer than either one of my brothers are to me because we stay in contact, we stay together. Anesimo's main responsibility right now in Brazil is translating the Bible, translating the gospel into the dialects of the communities that they're taking the gospel to. He's in charge of the recording studio. He's the one that is, he and his wife, Marilda, have actually traveled all across the, the world uh, translating for the Jesus film into these languages that they're taking this film into. We need to continue to pray for Anesimo and Marilda because they're hitting the road tomorrow and they won't be home for three months. They're going to be going around working on, these, on, the, on the translation of this film. We need to continue to pray for Anesimo, but these are some of the faces that we're taking care of. This next family is the Tupari family that are going back to their village. And you can see, this is a mom and dad with three kids, and the kids are getting the education, and the moms and dads are getting the, the biblical education to be missionaries. Another Kashinawa family that you see that is getting ready to go. They're raising up the next generation of missionaries. These are the faces of the entire group of students with some of the professors as we were getting ready to leave. These are faces that need to be burned into our minds and into our conscience to let us know that we still have a job to do and we still have a job to continue to do. And the reason is this last slide. Why is there an urgency for missions? Why is there an urgency for missions? I was walking around the campus as the sun was setting and I got this picture and it's a beautiful picture with the sun going down behind the jungle and it just hit me. The sun is setting on the opportunity to share the gospel. So we better be urgent. We better be diligent to continue to share the gospel wherever we go. Because there's going to come a time, and there's going to come a time soon, where Jesus is going to come back, and it's all over. Bethel, I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. I want to say thank you for the opportunity that you have uh, allowed Justin and I to be representatives of Bethel Baptist Church. And when we go, I promise you this, any mission trip we take, we're going to represent Bethel well. But it's because of you that we were able to do what God sent us to do. Because without you, we can't do it. Without, you, without Bethel, Mario would be struggling. Without Bethel, some of these students may not get the education that they need. Thank you, Bethel, for being generous, for being faithful. Now, you're going to hear some things coming up real soon about an opportunity to go to Brazil. If anyone is interested in going to Brazil, we're working on planning a trip for the fall, early winter. So if you're interested, be sure to get with me or let Justin know that you're interested in going because there's some more work. Just like Mario has this camp set up in Pimenta Bueno, Anesimo has one set up in Campo Grande where they live. And we need to go see what the needs are there and see how God is working with them and to spend time with the indigenous in southern Brazil. But no matter how busy we get about going on mission, going to Brazil, going to Belize, doing whatever God puts on our heart to do, let's never forget we cannot fail to be on mission right here where God's planted us with the people that are around us every day. Amen?